Hello and welcome back to your Pennsylvania Dutch Minute. Uh, this episode is not a viewer's request. Actually, uh, this is coming off of the heels of a very heated debate on Facebook. And I know probably I shouldn't be making a, a video when I'm fired up, but I had to. Um, while I was engaged in this debate, I wanted to send a link. The, the question is, just what is Pennsylvania Dutch? Who are who is Pennsylvania Dutch? What makes someone Pennsylvania Dutch? And the question was going back and forth on a Facebook feed, uh, and I was giving at least the information that I know after years of studying the language and, and growing up in the culture and uh, studying its history and its its it's studying the culture. Um, but people uh, continued to believe the the misinformation that's out there and there is a lot of misinformation out there and old myths that for whatever reason have been perpetuated and handed down from generation to generation uh and whenever i would try to uh, at least give um an <laughs> the historically accurate answer i was met with much pushback and and i understand that if people have believed one thing you know all their lives it, it's difficult for them to um accept that possibly they have wrong information. Um, also, uh, there were people that were engaging in that conversation that get that were hung up on certain words like Pennsylvania, and they thought that you only are Pennsylvania Dutch if you come from Pennsylvania, and that's not true either. So, the goal of this video is to hopefully answer some questions that you might have about what is Pennsylvania Dutch, who are the Pennsylvania Dutch? Just what makes up the Pennsylvania Dutch? And I thought I addressed some of these ideas and questions in previous videos, but maybe I didn't. So, uh, you know, we've done over 100 videos now, so maybe it's time <laughs> that I finally did this one. And apologies if I should have done this one sooner. My goal today is to give information that I know based off of my background. Again, uh, I'm not putting this video out to prove people wrong. I'm putting this video out to give information. You can take that information and do with it what you want. If you want to believe in what you've always grown up, uh, you know, what you grew up hearing, then that's 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 up to you. I'm providing with you with I'm providing everyone with some information today that they can use as they see fit. Uh, again, I'm not saying I'm an expert. Uh, I'm not, uh, but um, having authored books about the language, having done a lot of translation work in the language, having grown up on a Pennsylvania Dutch farm in rural southeast Berks County, Pennsylvania, with four grandparents that were all Pennsylvania Dutch, immersed in that culture. Uh, I, I am coming to you as somebody that does know what they're talking about. Having done research at the collegiate level and at the postgraduate level, uh, I'm coming to you with information that I have learned uh, with, you know, from 20 years of studying the language and studying the people and studying its history and culture. So take the information I'm about to provide you with whatever grain of salt you feel you need to take it with. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. Um, but for those of you that want to learn, uh, hopefully I'm going to address some questions that maybe you've always had or that you've heard people say one thing and you're like, oh, well, that isn't, maybe that's not necessarily accurate. So there is my four minute precursor to this video. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, let's start with this question that often gets asked. And this is probably one of the greatest misnomers about the Pennsylvania Dutch. Why is it called Dutch and not German? Why do you refer to yourself to Pennsylvania Dutch if you are not from the Netherlands? Of course, today, uh, the word Dutch means uh, and refers to the people that live in the Netherlands or people that come from the Netherlands or that's also what's referred to the language that's spoken in the Netherlands. Uh, so why is it that over that? You know, why do we say Pennsylvania Dutch versus German? One of the great misnomers and myths out there, and this has been backed up by Dr. Mark Loudon, who wrote the book, Pennsylvania Dutch. I'll put a link in the, in the video notes uh, for you if you were interested in buying that book. The common misconception out there that I hear people say all the time is, well, they took the word Deutsch, 
which is the German word for the German language, and it was misstrewn into the word Dutch. That's true, right? It was Deutsch. The English people heard Deutsch and thought Dutch, so they made it Dutch. Well, I'm sorry to burst your balloons if that's what you believe, but I'm telling you now that no, that is not accurate. This is now a minute where I can teach a little bit about how languages evolve. In the 1600s and in the early 1700s, as our people were coming to the New World, coming to America, of course the people that were in charge here in government offices were British because we were colonies of the British Empire. In that era, in the English language, the term Dutch referred to and meant anyone that came from Germanic-speaking Europe. I'm going to say that again. The definition of Dutch in the late 1600s and early 1700s English meant anyone coming from Germanic-speaking Europe. What we have to remember is that in 1705 or in 1683, when that first boat of Mennonite came to Philadelphia, there was no Germany. Germany did not exist. Germany as a country we know it today doesn't really become Germany until the late 1800s. And you can look on YouTube or Wikipedia as to what, you know, that whole history. It's a long, detailed history. But Germany as a unified country that was called Germany or Deutschland or the Republik Deutschland, those terms didn't exist in the 1680s and in the early 1700s. In English, the English language evolves. All languages evolve and change. Eventually, there would be the term German and Germany, meaning someone coming from that region. But in the 1680s, when we first start coming to America and throughout the 1700s, that was not the case. We were referred to as the Dutch because we were coming from Germanic-speaking Europe. That was the general term. We, being those people, being called that by our English, um, by our English countrymen, the term stuck, and we continued to use it. So today we do still call ourselves the Pennsylvania Dutch. Now, there are some people that have changed to the term Pennsylvania German because it is a little more accurate given that today Germany does exist. Really, you will see that along, and I've talked about this in previous videos, you will see that mainly among academics and in academia. If you run into the average Pennsylvania Dutchman on the streets of Berks County or Lancaster or Lebanon or Lehigh, most likely they are not going to say, oh, I'm Pennsylvania German. They're going to say, I'm Pennsylvania Dutch. That's what I use. It's a term I use because that's what... I grew up with, and that's what the, the majority of Pennsylvania Dutch speakers will say and use. So hopefully we cleared that one up right now. Again, for more reference on the history behind that, please pick up Dr. Mark Loudon's book, Pennsylvania Dutch, The History of an American Language. The next question, just what is Pennsylvania Dutch? Well, it's not just one thing, right? It's a term that can be referred to, one, a language. Two, an ethnic group. And three, a culture. I can say the term Pennsylvania Dutch and I can be referring to the language that we speak. I can be referring to the people that make up the Pennsylvania Dutch. And I can also use it to refer to our culture, a culture that is shared by the people who are Pennsylvania Dutch. So the next question always, well, who are the Pennsylvania Dutch? What do you have to do to become or be considered Pennsylvania Dutch? I think the very first ground rule uh, of acceptance into the group, so to speak, is that you are a descendant, if we're speaking from today's standard, uh, today's time period, if you are a descendant of someone who emigrated from the Rhineland region of present-day Germany between the years of 1683 and 1840, you can consider yourself Pennsylvania Dutch. Now, I have a kind of a squiggly line there in front of 1840. That is the, the cutoff date. Germans that came to America post-1840 are referred to as German Americans. Reasons being, the people that came, the Germans that came post-1840, 
tended to come from other regions of modern-day Germany. No longer were the majority of Germans coming here from the Rhineland. You now had Germans coming from northern Germany, from present-day eastern Germany, from Bavaria. That was a very different ethnic group than those of us who came from the Rhineland prior to that. So that's usually the cutoff. And why 1683 is a starting date? Because that is the first year that a group of Mennonite families left the Rhineland via Amsterdam and came to Pennsylvania. It was the first recorded uh, group of Pennsylvania Dutch that came to the New World. Now, can Pennsylvania Dutch be called a religion? No, of course not. It's That isn't one of its definitions. Underneath the umbrella term of Pennsylvania Dutch, there are many religious groups that are underneath that, and they really can be divided into two main groups, the plain people, and the term that eventually would be chosen or that's used often are the fancy people. I would also like to say for the plain people, we can refer to them as the sectarians, and the fancy Dutch can be referred to as the non-sectarians. And as you see in my little table here, the two largest religions that fall under the plain group would be the Amish and the Mennonites. The largest groups that fall under the fancy Pennsylvania Dutch or the non-sectarians, and this is in no particular order, Lutherans, the German Reformed Church, which today would be the United Church of Christ, the UCC. At one point, they were known as the German Reformed Church, or just the Reformed. Catholics, groups known like the Schwenkenfelders or the River Brethren. And I'm also going to say the Moravians. Now, I have an asterisk next to that because if you look up the history of the Moravian Church, the Moravians didn't come originally from the Rhineland. They immigrated from Moravia, which would be today parts of present-day the Czech Republic. They traveled with their leader, Count Zinzendorf, um, and came to the New World. But they settled in and among us, the Pennsylvania Dutch. And over the years, uh, you know, we started to share a lot of cultural norms. They started speaking Pennsylvania Dutch. And I have... A couple of friends that are Moravians today that are in the Moravian church that speak Pennsylvania Dutch. Their grandparents spoke Pennsylvania Dutch. So even though they don't necessarily qualify based on where they emigrated from, because they did come from a different region of Europe, they lived among us and uh, were very close to us. So I do put them in that group. Another question that sometimes gets asked or that people don't quite understand is, can someone be Pennsylvania Dutch and not be from Pennsylvania? The answer is yes. Don't get hung up on the term Pennsylvania Dutch thinking that it's only people from Pennsylvania. A large group of us, of the Pennsylvania Dutch, who have who are part of our group, didn't originally settle in Pennsylvania. A large group, and with very famous Pennsylvania Dutch heroes like Conrad Weiser, first settled in the Squahari Valley of upstate New York and eventually came down to Pennsylvania Dutch country, quote-unquote Pennsylvania Dutch country, the counties of Berks and Le Lancaster and Lehigh and Lebanon, that region of Pennsylvania. But there are Amish settlements now, of course, that have stretched way beyond Pennsylvania. There are Amish in many states throughout the United States with heavy groups of populations in states like Ohio and Indiana and Wisconsin and the upper Midwest. Are they still Pennsylvania Dutch even though they don't live in Pennsylvania? Of course they are. They are descendants of those people that were originally here and made up that group. One thing I always like to remember to say to people is that all Amish are Pennsylvania Dutch, but not all Pennsylvania Dutch are Amish. I think that's an often, you know, that's a part that people always get mixed up about. I probably haven't answered every question that you have. That's what the comment section below is for, or if you're seeing this via Facebook, you can comment in, the, in that section below the video link, or if you're looking at this on the YouTube channel, you can comment below. And if you have a question or a further question or you need something else a little bit better explained, please don't hesitate to, to ask that question. This, this video is running a little long, and I apologize. However, it is something that I constantly feel like I'm banging my head against the wall sometimes um, because people ask these, there's these misconceptions out there, there's these myths that have been perpetuated over generations, and 
I like to give the information you can, do, like I said at the beginning, you can do with the information what you want. However, I hope that I at least addressed some questions that maybe you have, or I've cleared up some things that you maybe quite didn't understand, or maybe I just told you about things that you never even knew existed. Um, in any way, I think it's a learning, a, a learning opportunity for all of us. Um, and any opportunity I get to at least uh, tell people about us, about our people, about our language, about our culture is always a win-win situation for me. So there you go. Again, if you have a further question, email me if you don't want to post it publicly or comment below either on Facebook or here on YouTube. Keep the questions coming. If you have an idea for a future video, please never hesitate to write. I answer all emails that I get. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, please feel free to do. That way you get a notification every time a new video comes out or any other materials that I put on Facebook, on YouTube, like stuff from my band. Uh, there's some music on there as well that you can feel free to check out or videos from my Ask a Pennsylvania Dutchman series. Um, also, please feel free to visit my website, padutch101.com, where you'll find helpful links. For more information regarding Pennsylvania Dutch, all things Pennsylvania Dutch, you can visit my blog that is written entirely in Pennsylvania Dutch for those of you that have a better handle on the language. But I have a lot of helpful links there with, for anything you can think of Pennsylvania Dutch. Okay, I've talked long enough. Halt's mal, as we say in Pennsylvania Dutch. Time for me to shut up. And I uh, hope to see you next time. See you real soon. And I appreciate all of the fan mail and all of the emails that I receive. It makes me feel like hey, what I'm doing is actually appreciated, and that makes me feel good. So until next time, practice your Pennsylvania Dutch. Keep being curious about us and about ourselves, and if you're Pennsylvania Dutch, darn it, be proud of who you are. We have a very rich and uh, we have a very rich culture and history that we have a lot to be proud of in in all that uh, our forefathers have done, both here, you know, here in the United States and what our distant ancestors did back in the old country. Until next time, mock scoot. Mock scoot.